The price of XRP cannot be cheap. This is something that was stated by David Schwartz over five years ago, but he just followed up on this idea. And in this video, I want to talk about exactly why that's the case. One of the biggest questions constantly asked by the XRP community is what is going to make XRP go up? And how high does XRP really need to be to fill its full intended use case? In this video, I want to talk about both of these topics and let you guys know where I think XRP goes over the long run. Guys, I think this is an extremely important video in really understanding why XRP needs to have a high price in the future. Make sure to stick around for this whole thing. It is so important to understanding what you hold. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like these videos and subscribe to the channel. These two simple things really do help me out so much. Also, if you have any good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, I want to start this video off and just quickly share something with you that I believe is really important, because one of the things that every single creator in the XRP community deals with is essentially shadow bans. I don't know why it is. It's... I don't know why it's the case, but for whatever reason, XRP channels are heavily suppressed, and I wanted to share something with you guys real quick to just let you... I don't know why it's the case, whether or not people are trying to hold back the XRP community, whether or not people are trying to prevent the masses from learning about XRP, whatever the reason is, is there is no doubt in my mind that this is something that is actively happening. And I wanted to share with you this video because I think this is a great description of something that everyone deals with in the XRP community. And I just wanted to share it with you because I really have a call to action to all of you to really help get past these shadow bans. Listen up to this real quick and then I'll break down exactly what is so critical for all of you guys in order to help make sure that new people coming into crypto learn about XRP and we can continue to grow this ecosystem. Two years ago, I had made a bunch of content about XRP versus SEC, the Ripple case, and those videos perform extremely well until one day, about 15 of those videos all got flagged by YouTube and taken down by YouTube. I appealed for it. All those videos got put back. Okay, good to go, whatever. A week later, my entire account was banned by YouTube saying I broke policy. Now, I appealed that. I got the account back about two weeks later. But ever since then, this, can, this channel has been losing subs and losing view counts ever since. Ever since I got that account back, this channel has been shrinking as opposed to all of my competition has been growing. I've been trying to revive it for two years whether it be through trading content or the podcast, and no content is simply working or getting in favor of the algorithm. For example, I would post the same exact reel on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube is my biggest account by far, and on TikTok and Instagram, those same pieces of content would get millions of views, and on YouTube, my biggest account would get like 2,000 views. So guys, I just wanted to share that with you quickly because I think it's really important for you guys to understand this is something we all deal with in the XRP community. It's not only me, but it's something that really we require as creators help from you guys with. The only way we can get through these shadow bans and make sure that new people learning about XRP can continue to be pushed content about the digital asset is if you guys make sure you like the videos that you enjoy and to subscribe to channels that you think are going to to be beneficial for other people to see. I just wanted to bring this to your attention so you guys understand this is real and so that you guys understand how powerful it is when you guys go out of your way to actually like content and support creators who are making the content. I really do think it's so important for us to continue to grow the XRP community and I want you guys to understand we're really doing it against a lot of outside powers who don't want to see us succeed. So guys, if there's one thing that makes a difference, it's you guys supporting the content. And I just wanted to show you that because I think it's a great piece of proof that this really is happening, even to people who only are making a couple videos about XRP. I want to move on though and cover the main context of this video, which is can XRP really be a low price forever if it's going to achieve its full and intended use case? And funny enough, this conversation is actually grounded in probably the most reliable source out there, which is David Schwartz. Funny enough, this conversation actually took place a long time ago, but it was just rehashed, and I believe the point that David Schwartz is making here is so critical to understand. 
What this post was originally about is David Schwartz back in 2017 saying it can't be dirt cheap. It doesn't make any sense. If XRP costs $1, they'd need a million XRP, which would cost a million dollars. If XRP costs a million dollars, they would need one XRP, which would once again cost a million dollars. Now, someone was actually mocking David and saying seven years later, XRP is still 60 cents, so obviously it can be dirt cheap. David Schwartz came back and said, though, last time I checked, $1 million worth of XRP still costs $1 million. So making a $1 million payment will still cost at least $1 million. And David Schwartz then came back and said what I believe is the most important part about all of this. He says, but needing to pay everyone one XRP is not a realistic payment use case. Instead, it's a lot more realistic that you have to send $50 to someone, $100 to someone. You guys know how it goes. No one's just saying, hey, I need to pay you one XRP. And the person on the other side saying, oh, perfect, one XRP is the value of the payment that matters, not necessarily the amount of XRP. David Schwartz continues. He says, in fact, a lower price XRP makes payments more expensive. That is why it was impractical to use BTC to buy a house when BTC was only $100. But practically now, people are buying houses with BTC because it's a higher price. Lower prices for XRP make XRP payments more expensive. And let me talk about exactly why that is the case, because this is the most important part about all of this and the entire thesis that a high priced XRP is absolutely critical to the success of the ecosystem over the long run. What we need to understand is that in order for an ecosystem to build value in any single blockchain, the native token is typically the liquidity for that payment system. The native token of the XRP ledger is XRP and payments flow through the XRP ledger, typically through XRP. Now, if you're going to just have a couple small dollar payments on the XRP ledger, you're obviously not going to need a lot of liquidity. And therefore, XRP doesn't need to be a very high price. But if XRP really is to achieve its long term goal of being this new neutral asset that transforms the way financial institutions interact with one another, if we really do see XRP achieve its long term goal of XRP being this neutral liquidity, not only connecting nations, but large businesses, this is going to require a lot more liquidity than is present on the XRP ledger today. And this is exactly what David Schwartz is saying. David Schwartz is saying, if you have an entire ecosystem that is all trying to work with a low priced XRP, there is just not going to be a lot of liquidity there. There is going to be a lot of friction because if one party wants to send $100 million, they are pretty much going to need all the XRP available in order to send that payment. But if they only need one XRP to send $100 million, obviously unrealistic, but just bear with me, it is extremely easy to get one XRP to send that $100 million. So this is the perfect example of why a high price XRP increases liquidity and creates a higher velocity of money, allowing financial institutions to move money faster and faster all around the world. Now, the thing we need to understand here is that in order for a high priced XRP to make sense, you need liquidity demand. You need large financial institutions demanding that XRP and demanding that instant, seamless, neutral liquidity. So the question is, is what's going to drive that demand? What's going to drive financial institutions needing that liquidity? And in my opinion, that's the whole premise of why Ripple is so important as a company. What Ripple is doing is putting the XRP ledger in front of the largest institutions in the entire world, the institutions that need the liquidity. Take a look at this. This is from Ashley Prosper, and what she is breaking down is the amount of back and forth Ripple has had with the Federal Reserve in terms of employees. Greg Kidd, Chief Risk Officer, Ken Gifford, CCO, Norman Reed, General Counsel, and many more, including people like Michael Barr. These are all people who have gone back and forth between the Federal Reserve and Ripple. In my opinion, this is Ripple strategically positioning XRP to be a decentralized neutral piece of liquidity for large banking institutions and to sit as this neutral liquidity for the entire financial system. This is these high dollar value payments, these high value liquidity needs that our financial system desperately needs a solution to. And Ripple wants to position XRP to be that solution. The amount of value we're talking about here is in the hundreds of trillions of quadrillions of dollars. 
Does that mean that every single movement in the financial system is going to go through XRP? Absolutely not. But what it means is XRP is being positioned in a place that is very unique that requires a very high dollar amount to make these trades and make these movements of money as liquid and seamless as possible. What we know from David Schwartz is that is going to require a high dollar XRP to be able to facilitate these transfers. What I want people to understand is that where XRP is being positioned is probably the most important part of the equation. Ripple didn't have the strategy that they were going to go sell XRP to retail and create a new way of moving money between two retail people. That probably would not require a very high price for XRP. Because the amount of money that retail moves is, is simply incomparable to the amount of value that large institutions in large countries move on a yearly basis. What Ripple is doing is positioning the XRP ledger in a place where high value payments are made in a place that requires large liquidity. And they're saying, this is the technology we think you should use to solve these problems. At the end of the day, and I've said this multiple times, the XRP ledger is great from a technology standpoint, but many different cross-border payments could be done with many different digital assets. The difference is, is Ripple. Ripple is going to these financial institutions with a professional team, with professional compliance officers, with professional personnel to help these large corporations who don't understand digital assets understand the ecosystems and adopt these technologies. The digital asset Ripple is choosing to push onto these institutions is XRP. And that's why I believe when you take a look at the broader picture of which digital assets are going to be used for the most important parts of our financial system, I believe where XRP is being positioned because of Ripple makes it a no-brainer in capturing these large value payments where money is being moved all around the world between the biggest institutions we know of today. That is why I believe XRP cannot be a low price, because in order to facilitate this liquidity by the largest institutions, XRP is going to have to be as liquid as possible, and we're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars, that's going to be a very high price. I really hope this video helps you understand that it's really not about XRP magically going to a high price. It is about Ripple being successful and positioning XRP as this decentralized neutral liquidity between large financial institutions and them adopting that solution. That solution is in fact adopted, it's used, it's helpful, it transforms the way the financial system works. There is no question in my mind that a high price XRP will follow. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update and for now, like allow.